Hey guys, Chris Dick here. We're going to be uh, talking about uh, in, uh, pulling some data from our IBM demo cloud here. Uh, we're going to, first of all, we're going to get finishing up with uh, using our archive section of our MBC website. Now, um, we've done some, uh, some, some counts where we've just pulled static data. We've pulled some data from a file that we have uh, in our, uh, our web folders. And the next step, uh, we're going to start, we're going to look at uh, the reality of a lot of situations these days where data exists uh, somewhere else, uh, that being in a data warehouse someplace. And in particular, we're going to be uh, looking at using Hive and uh, ODBC to pull the information off of our Hive database on our Hadoop cluster in IAM Demo Cloud. So, um, if you recall, if you've watched the uh, the video from previously where we um, where we created our data in uh, in Hive, if you haven't watched this video, I definitely suggest that you uh, that you uh, uh, go back into the Hive playlist and uh, should be part two. Um, but going forward, so let's uh, let's look at our data here. We're in Hive uh, right now. Um, I've run a, a, a um, select statement, uh, just select star from students, okay, and you can see this is all the data that, is, that has come up from a, uh, a student's table that exists on their Hive database. <coughs> so going from that, um, in our archives controller, we have to create a, uh, an action here, and it's going to cr produce a view res result. I'm going to call this action uh, Hive, and um, as all, as with everything here that we're doing, it's going to return uh, some kind of data. Uh, so in this case, it's going to return a list. Now you'll notice these other ones were uh, JSON results. I'm going to I'm going to keep this very simple. We're going to use Entity Framework to uh, to display it. It will always work just the same way if you just simply you know rename this to JSON and return a JSON result. You can do it either way, but I'm gonna keep this very simple. I'm gonna be returning a list of student objects, okay? And uh, as always, I like to use the, the variable name items. Uh, I like to try to keep uh, my variable names kind of generic when I'm doing this sort of thing. And I'm going to return a view result with uh, items in my parameters, okay? So now I've got no red underlines. I've finished the top and bottom statements. Now, the second thing that we have to do is set up a connection string, okay? This connection string is, um, you know, is, is a, uh, it's similar to if we look in our, uh, in our web config, for example, if I go into web config here, I could put the connection string in here as a matter of fact, uh, but for now I'm not going to. It looks kind of like this. This is our connection string for uh, student tracker. Um, the next step here is, whoops, go back over here. We have a, uh, we have to set it up, so we have to do this, okay? We have a DSN that we have created before. Uh, we used our ODBC drivers, let's pull this up, ODBC, always easiest to do a search for that. And we set this one up in a previous video here. So if you haven't set it up, that's part, part one of uh, Hive ODBC app setup. Our DSN name is IBM underscore Hive, okay? So what we have to do here is to do um, that, IBM underscore Hive, Spell it right. Okay. Now the next stage, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pull over here in in my Notepad++ because sometimes it's just a little easier for me to cut and paste some stuff. So um, there are two parameters that you want to put in at this point. Now I've uh, I've already sort of taken this step of uh, putting in. Um, everybody knows my username. But your password is the one that you want to put in. That's your. That's obviously your own password. What I've done is I've taken a, f a couple steps here, and I've put my password into a uh, into a static class just so I can use it without uh, people seeing it. And to do this, 
and you can simply comment this information out and you just plug in using these uh, array parameters here for uh, string.format. It just feeds in the username and then the password and whatnot. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up an ODBC uh, connection object. Okay, C-O-N-N -N <coughs> equals new ODBC, ODBC connection. Now our connection string is going to be fed into the connection object. Okay. And remember, just by using this, uh, this using statement, it uh, handles all of the closure of the connection and all the rest. Uh, I always like to close the connection nonetheless, but uh, so we're going to be we're going to be doing that either way. Now, the next thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to have to set up a, uh, a couple things. First step is you have to open the, uh, the connection. OK, and by nature, you have to close the connection. Okay, top and bottom again. All right. Next step is we're going to create a command object. All right. This command object uh, is the command that we're going to execute on our Hive server. So if you recall over here, uh, in order for this to come up, I, uh, I did select star from students. All right. So the command that we're going to send out is select star from student. All right. Uh, let's see. Execute. cheat a little bit here just for time saving I'm going to make sure we can get past this so our command text that we're going to be putting in is uh, select star from students okay the next step is uh, we need we need to create a data reader and this data reader uh, essentially uh, executes the command and then uh, and then returns back results from the database okay the stage here is we're going to begin reading the data. Okay. Get that to indent. Reading the data is quite simple. I'm going to explain this uh, statement here to you. Um, from this point here, each time it goes to the next record, okay, it adds an, a, a student object to the database. Okay, or to this list that's going to be returned, like this one right here. Okay, now setting up these uh, these parts that come through, um, student is a strongly typed object, so that means that it has an ID, for example, which is not a string. Okay, so everything that's going to be coming from uh, the Hive database is going to be a string, so we have to format it into the right uh, the right format. Okay. We have a first name, last name, date of birth, create date, and edit date. If you recall from over here, that's the information that we have through here. Okay. We'll go back over to our archive. Um, so first of all, we have to uh, or sorry, we have to convert the string format of the uh, of the column information into an integer and that allows us to assign student ID ID these ones are quite simple they're just straight up strings so you just use the two string function and it converts it to a string these ones are a little bit more complicated <coughs> because they are dates uh, date times dot parse will simply take the date that comes in uh, as a string and parses it into a date time uh, same with create date and edit, edit date okay now this doesn't have any error checking here. If you really want to get uh, uh, into you know, double checking your errors and all the rest, which I certainly advise, advise if you're trying to go into a production system, this is just for demonstration purposes. This is just going to parse out whatever comes in. So if it's an invalid date, you're probably going to get an error. All right. Now, uh, once we're done, we close our connection and then we return the view results. Okay. What we have right now, we don't have any view, so we have to create a view, and we're going to call that view hive. Okay. Now I've already got a, a view created, but I'm going to go through that view and explain it to you. I'm not going to click add here. In other words, <coughs> uh, so we have a view. The view name is called hive. The template that we're going to be do using is a list, and we're going to be asking for a list of student objects, which comes from the data context. Okay, uh, or that's the context class that it uses. We don't use our data context in this, but uh, just so you can know. All right, 
you would then click add that is going to create a list okay uh, I'm, I've scaled it back a little bit so that everyone can see how this works now um, this statement up here is what we just set up as well so it says it's an I enumerable of type students now recall that I enumerable is just an interface for a list okay and we are returning a list which allows us to be uh, an I enumerable type okay the next step is we're going to be um, setting up a table our top row here is our uh, is our header information is to describe what data is being displayed so we have student name and then we have date of birth now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just simply type out date of birth rather than trying to extract information from the uh, from the object the next step is we use a for each loop which goes around uh, each uh, each item in the model right here okay this uh, this column here displays first and last name okay so that was student name so it'll say Chris Dick as the as the name next one is going to display date of birth now if you recall date of birth is a um, is, is a date time format so but in hive it's just a date so it's going to come over as a date uh, but because we convert it to a date time it's uh, it's going to display date and time so we're not going to worry about what the final end result is just that it actually got the data so let's uh, let's go ahead and run this <coughs> and once we're up we are going to uh, go into the archive controller and uh, view our, our hive uh, action right here okay now this takes just a little bit of time we've added some new code to it so it's going to uh, uh, go a little bit slow at the start but we will certainly get to our end result now before this starts to load up I'm just gonna go in here and ask for the hive hive uh, information so what it's doing is it's going out asking uh, IMW cloud for the uh, the hive data that is that exists there right now and uh, once it's retrieved it it will display in our view okay so we have our data displayed if you recall from where we are in putty you can see that it's pretty much the same order that came in and we can be pretty decently happy with what it displays there's a mention here for date time so it's going to show 12 a.m. as everything these uh, these dates here they had no dates so when we convert them over to um, to our CSV it had to give a default uh, date which is uh, January 1st 1900 12 a.m. all right guys well thanks for watching um, remember to like and share and uh, there are several more videos coming on the way so I really appreciate you uh, you're interacting with me and uh, have an amazing day.